morning. And those in the back, can you hear okay? We appreciate your being here. We welcome you to the dedication of the Gilbreth Reed Career and Technical Center. It is a stunning state-of-the-art facility. Yes, say a round of applause for this building. <laughs> I'm Deborah Crone, the interim superintendent for the great Garland ISD, and I truly appreciate each and every one of you being here today to help us dedicate this fabulous facility. It is my extreme pleasure to introduce to you our board of trustees today, and board members, I'm going to ask you to stand and remain standing when your name's called, and audience, if you'll hold your applause until all are recognized. We'll start with our board president, Larry Glick. Board, board Vice President Jed Reed, Board Secretary Johnny Beach, Board Assistant Secretary Linda Griffin, Board Member Robert Selders. We have a couple of board members who are out of town. Now we can congratulate this outstanding board. I'm also very pleased to be able to recognize some past superintendents of the Garland ISD who are with us today. When I call your name, if you'll stand and remain standing until all are recognized, and then we'll have a round of applause. All righty. We're going to start with Dr. Jill Sugart, who served from 1985 to 1999. Next, we have Curtis Colwell. Where are you, Curtis? Dr. Cutter, there he, come on over here, Curtis. Get on out. This is Curtis. He's wandering around in the crowd. <laughs> Dr. Curtis Colwell, who served from 1999 to 2012. And then we have Dr. Bob Morrison. Bob, where are you? Here you are, Bob. Come on over here so people can see. Bob Morrison served from 2013 to 2017. Please give these individuals a round of applause. And now I am truly delighted to introduce to you a very special person, a person who has undergone quite a bit of scrutiny uh, and proven himself quite the leader and mission ISD. I am very proud to tell you that our board of trustees about 30 minutes ago approved the hiring of Dr. Ricardo Lopez, and he is with us today. Dr. Lopez, please stand up. I know many of you have not had the pleasure of meeting him yet. I want you to know you're in for a real treat. He is a super individual, an educational leader in the highest sense, and he will love this district. His wife, Linda, is also with him today. Linda, would you please stand? Where is Linda? Oh, she's way at the back. Can you see her back there? She's absolutely beautiful. You'll have to meet her. She's a high school counselor as well, so we're proud to have another educator. We also have some past Garland ISD board members who are with us today, so I would ask them to stand in audience if you'll hold your applause until all are recognized. I'm going to start. Did uh, Dr. Uh, Cindy Castaneda come in? Cindy, there she is. We also have Steve Nag. Steve, where are you? Steve, and we have Steve Hill. Did he make it in yet, Steve Hill? And finally, Elvia Flores. Did Elvia make it? Where are you, Elvia? There's Elvia. Let's give these past leaders a round of applause. We have several elected officials with us today that I want to recognize. First of all, we have our state representative, Cindy Burkett. Cindy, stand up. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm not sure if Dallas County Commissioner Teresa Daniel was able to make it, but she did send her representative, I believe, and her name is Erin Moore. Erin, stand up. Thank you for being here and representing Ms. Daniel. There she is. We do have a representative from Bob Hall, our Texas Senator, and it's Marv Allen. Marv, if you'll wave your hand. Thank you for being here.
guess it was so exciting, all those people that you got to recognize, that's what did it. You know, we are here at this dedication ceremony, and we're going to recognize two outstanding individuals in just a minute. But I also want you to take some time to walk the halls of this remarkable facility. You're going to hear from students who are in about 90 different courses that are focused on providing our students with 21st century skills. They're going to demonstrate what they're learning for you. You're also going to see firsthand the focus of the staff here at the GRCTC and also the focus of our Board of Trustees on ensuring that all of Garland ISD students are college and career ready. And speaking of college and career ready, the two individuals for whom this building is named stand as true leaders in their field of career and technology education. Clarence Reed served in several capacities in this district as a principal of elementary schools, middle schools, and finally he was named as the first vocational education director for the Garland ISD. He was a well-respected and trusted individual. And during his tenure, he hired a young guy who had been in the classroom about two years and hired him as vocational coordinator. And that individual was Philip Gilbreth. So these two individuals have been tied for a long time and it's so appropriate that the name of this facility bears both of their titles. I want to recognize the families that are with us today. So will the Reed family please stand and let us recognize you. Thank you so much for being here as we recognize your outstanding father. I know you loved him and we loved him too. Also now want to ask the Gilbreth family to stand. And thank you very much for being here to help us recognize Phil. At this time, it is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Philip Gilbreth, who's going to share a few of his thoughts about his 50-year career here in the Garland ISD. Phil. difficult to stand here today and, and look at my friends and my family and my Garland family and express my feelings and my thanks for everything that's happened and for this beautiful facility. Good morning. It is a, it's a beautiful day. It's a great day. And it's a great, a great day to be with Garland ISD. It's difficult for me to take my, my eyes off of my my children and my grandchildren here, and, and then all the visitors that I have, uh, friends and that have come from all over. Thank you all for coming. I want to share a quote with you this morning. That's the way I'll begin. Everyone you meet in life has played some role in the person that you've become. The older I get, and I'm 70, 72 years of age, the older I get, the more I believe in that statement. And I repeat it, everyone you meet in life has played some role in the person that you've become. And I'm an example of what that quote says. My life has been influenced by people as far back as I can remember. As a youngster, my life was influenced by family, by friends, by teachers, and by, and by the good Lord. My career in Garland began in September 1967. Upon arriving at Garland High School as a teacher, I became a member of a new family. While experiencing the challenges of a new teacher, Colleagues and friends assisted me with encouragement and support that very first year. I wouldn't have made it without the support of those that assisted me at that time. From then on, opportunities for growth and improvement came from everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Isn't that right, Dr. Sugar? Isn't that right? We taught together at Garland High School and also at North Garland High School. From then on, opportunities for growth and improvement came from everywhere, as I said. In about 1969, while I was teaching one day, a gentleman entered my lab. 
and that was my first introduction to J.C. Reed. Mr. Reed was the new to the position of director of vocational education. He was looking for someone. He was desperate. He was looking for someone <laughs> to assist him in the planning of staff development activities, of which I had no experience. Mr. Reed then offered me my first leadership opportunity. And shortly thereafter, he provided me with my first opportunity in the planning of programs and facilities at North Garland High School. In the summer of 1974, Mr. Reed selected Judy Knight and me to our first administrative roles in Garland ISD. There, he was our mentor, he was our teacher, and he was our friend. During his tenure, many opportunities were provided us to learn, to grow, and to be involved in program planning and facility development. The foundation he had laid and the tutelage he provided enabled the development of strong career and technical education opportunities that continue to exist today. Upon his retirement in 1989, we were prepared to take on the responsibilities of planning the programs and facilities of all existing and new middle schools and high schools. Do you know what happened three years ago today? Think back, three years. This is a test question. <laughs> On November 4th, 2014, our citizens and patrons of Garland ISD passed a $455 million bond program. That, in, that was for the benefits of the Tri-Cities of Garland, Rowlett, and Saxe. For several years prior to this, as new programs and facility additions were planned and constructed at South Garland High School and North Garland High School, our research and our thoughts and our ideas were filed in our mind about the possibility of a future career center. The new bond program included over $28 million for construction of the, of the center. More than a year was spent in the planning and the working with architects, and Garland ISD staff in the design process for the new facility. More than 25 visits were made to other districts and facilities prior to the completion of the construction drawings. The construction time of more than 18 months was spent in the actual construction of this beautiful facility. And I'm so fortunate and so glad to be a part of this. Your support, and your confidence, and your trust allowed us to plan, to design, and make recommendations for the new center to meet the needs of our students, the Garland ISD, and our communities of Garland, Rowlett, and Saxe. For that, we're most grateful. To the school board, the administration, and the patrons, this center is both a testament and a confirmation of a major investment to enhance the college and career opportunities for Garland ISD. <clears throat> See this? I have to show you, it's, it's, it's big. 50 years, only people with 50 years experience get the big one. <laughs> Thank you. This is the pinnacle of my career in Garland. During this time, it's been my pleasure to work with students, with teachers, with parents, administrators, boards of trustees, representatives of business and industry, and seven superintendents. <laughs> Going back to my initial quote about the importance of people in one's life, it's my pleasure to introduce those who have in the past been a member of the CTE team. My friends and colleagues, if you will, stand and wave as I call your name. Judy Knight, where's Judy? Wave big, Judy. Jan Williams, where's Jan? Gail Milliken, I think is out of town, was not able to join us today. Barbara King, the, the special thing about these folks is that they're all retired. <laughs> I want to take a moment to give special recognition to my colleagues and my friends involved in the research and the planning, the designing, the construction, the equipping and the furnishing of the Gilbreth Reed Career and Technical Center. Kelly Hartman, Kelly, if you would stand. 
Cheryl Jacobs. Cheryl's a coordinator for business and marketing. Dr. Sandra Thompson, coordinator of family and consumer sciences and the Infant Center. And my friend, longtime friend, Don Kelly, who's a specialist who works closely with me in ag science, technology education, and the trades and industry programs. Donna Young, where's Donna? Donna is their administrative assistant who tries to keep me where I'm supposed to be. And then Kristen Lawrence. Kristen is our secretary. And then I'm pleased to, to introduce to you my, my family, my lovely wife of 49 years, Nancy. It's been a great place and a wonderful district for us to, to live and to, to raise our children and to educate them. And we thank you for that. My son, Justin. Justin, stand up, son. I want him to see you. And his lovely wife, Jennifer. And my grandchildren, Jackson Phillips. Stand up, buddy. Jaylee Ray, Jaylee Ray, and then there's Jordan Joe. Hi, Jordan Joe. Then my lovely daughter, Jenna Lynn O'Brien. Can you stand up? They got. They have to see you. They have to see you. And her husband, Sean. Sean has a new job, so he was not able to be with us. And then she's holding my grandson, Connor Abner. I want you to meet also my sister, Gail, and her husband, Bobby Bain. Where are you? My sister, Carolyn, and her husband, Gage Himes. Where are you? My sister, Brenda Smith. Stand up, Brenda, so they can see you too. My great aunt, Alina Moss. Where's Aunt Alina? Thank you, dear. Appreciate you coming. Also in the audience today are other members of my family, special friends that have come from everywhere and I've renewed acquaintances with friends and former students. And uh, it's been a very special occasion. Folks, I'm almost done, but I never get this opportunity again. My sincere appreciation is expressed to Corrigan Architects, the contractor Lee Lewis, and to the Jacobs Group who respectively designed built and managed this three-year project of the Gilbreth Reed Career and Technical Center. Thank you for your patience and for sharing your expertise and experience with us. To Dr. Erica Crump, stand if you would, Dr. Crump. Dr. Crump, <clears throat> Dr. Crump came on board January 2nd of this year, and uh, uh, Clint Elsasser, where's Clint? Clint, these folks provided leadership for a successful August opening of the center and made a real dream come true. To my Garland ISD family, thank you for being here and for your continued encouragement and support. To our educational partners, business and industry representatives, and all the others who contributed and provided input into the planning and the design of this facility, we thank you. To the Garland ISD Board of Trustees, to the administrative leadership, and everyone else present, I leave you with a quote of Neil Postman. And that quote is, children are the living messages we send to a time we will not see. This facility and those that teach here and the instructional opportunities that are provided stand as a testimony in your transitioning and transforming the young lives of generations to come for our community, for our state, and for our nation. To the Board of Trustees and to each member of the Board, thank you for the honor bestowed upon me in sharing of the name of the Gilbreth Reed Career and Technical Center with my mentor and friend, J. Clarence Reed. We're very grateful and humbled with this honor. Please keep in mind, as people have made differences in our lives, it's so important that we strive to make a difference in the lives of others. We love you, thank you, and God bless you.
Next, we have Jed Reed, board member, and also the son of Jay Clarence Reed. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm not one for many words. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take a little personal time and talk about Daddy. But first, uh, I want to say a very big thank you to a person that one afternoon entered my office and sat down in a chair and looked at me and said, you know who the new building needs to be named after? Now, what that person didn't know is that in my personal mind, I had thought about the name and the appropriateness of the name, but this individual gave validation to that selfish thought. And so thank you, Dr. Morrison, for that uh, thoughtfulness and the support and the insight to see what the name of this facility meant to the history and the culture of the Garland Independent School District. Now, Daddy came to the district in 1951, and he's held several positions, and, and Daddy was a very private person along with my mother, and they did not uh, show a lot of outward excitement, but they were always very loyal to the district, and the district has provided my family for many, many things, and for the success that each of our family members have had in our life. All four of our family, my myself and my three brothers, are all graduates of the Garland Independent School District, and we owe our success, we owe our training to that. And many of you in the audience here today are individuals who were either peers of my dad and my mother, were students of theirs, were students of mine, were family friends and associates. And we truly appreciate your presence here today. Now, as I said, Daddy was a, a, a quiet person, but he was not indifferent to making his opinion known. Not that I inherited any of those traits. Uh, he always set his mind. He always laid out and, and made conscious decisions for the benefit of the students of the Garland Independent School District. And so there are many stories that could be told. There are, are many you know, interactions that, that could be said. And, and there's a couple that I guess I should tell. Uh, and probably, you know, some of those cross the line of, of board employee interaction, you know, that governance thing that, you know, you, you don't cross over and communicate. Uh, I guess one interesting factor is the day that, that Daddy and Homer got, Johnson got caught putting up campaign signs during the school day by the, the superintendent. That, that didn't go over very well with a lot of people. Uh, it, it could also reflect on, on his departure and his retirement because he didn't tell anybody. Or he kept telling people and people didn't believe. He told my mother, I'm going to retire when I'm 59. Mother did not believe. And so he did his paperwork himself. He, he left his keys on Dr. Douglas's desk. He called Phil and Judy in and said, it's the day I'm gone. You can call me, but I don't want to talk to anyone else. And so he comes home, and I walk in through the garage, and all of his books are stacked with his little nameplate on top. And I went like, ooh, what happened? And I walk into the house, and Mother's in the rocking chair, rocking back and forth, and she said, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to go to the poorhouse. Your father's quit. <laughs> now, that was when he was 59, and he was fortunate enough to enjoy more than 30 years of retirement. Because today is an important day. It's a dedication day for this. It's the remembrance of the passage of the bond. But this is also the anniversary of my father's passing. And so that day makes this very important to me and my family. And so that remembrance is, is good for all of us. So as he entered retirement, uh, Phil and Judy wanted to provide a party. 
and he wasn't into parties. And so they contacted me. They said, what do you want? What do you think we should do? And I said, well, just get some people to write some nice things. And, and what is the kind of gift would he like? And I said, he's been talking about a rototiller. <laughs> and so they collected money and got him a rototiller. And he didn't want, you know, he didn't know. And they said, how, do you, how can we bring it by? And I said, well, he's not going to want to say anything. So just leave it on the front porch, ring the doorbell, and run. <laughs> now, they took me literally. And that's exactly what they did. Is that not correct? And he was very insulted by the fact, well, they didn't even stop and talk. And I, you know, so I had to kind of give him the little lecture like, this is what you wanted. This is what you get. And he used that rototiller immediately and plowed up the, uh, the backyard and planted uh, eggplant. And we had eggplant for every meal that season. Now, this is in the, the, uh, the house that we all grew up in. And as every retired couple does, they go out and buy a bigger house when they retire. And they did that. And he used that road tailor in the, at the house at Toller Bay for decades after that. And plowed up the backyard and planted and, and shared the produce of that planting to everyone. And implementing his little ag background that he had. And so he enjoyed his retirement. He enjoyed his time with the GISD. He enjoyed the history of this district. He knew that it was a family. He moaned the fact that many of those peers that he worked with continued to work and passed on the job. When Mr. Turner passed away and Mr. Hudson passed away, and Dr. Sewell passed away, he hurt for them because they had not taken the advantage and enjoyed the retirement that he had had. So this building selfishly is something that I appreciate to honor him because I was the child that didn't leave <laughs> and just kind of hung around. And that hanging around allowed me to some time of observation and some time of closeness and some time of appreciation, even though at times it was difficult especially as an employee here, everyone would run and tell them everything I did. <laughs> so I appreciate all of you coming. I appreciate what this means. I appreciate your good thoughtfulness for him and my family. And I want you to enjoy this place, come back and see it with kids in the room, see it with the activity going on and the interaction and the collaboration and, and the meaning that it, this does because students who go through the program here and at the other high schools will graduate and make much more than a teacher. Just in the monetary sense, but in the growth and leadership sense, they will have gained an extraordinary advantage in the community. And it's for the support and the appreciation of the community that we have this opportunity to serve those students. So I thank you. I thank you on behalf of my family, my brother John, my brother Julian, my brother Brent. Actually, his name is Jeffrey because we're all Jays. Uh, but uh, we appreciate that, and we thank you for your time. Thank you. permission to just tell one story, but when you're board president, you sometimes can skirt the rules, so I'm going to tell two stories. But first, I would especially like to thank our architects, Corrigan, for this building. When you tour it today, you'll see 120,000 square feet, but the most important thing to me is we designed it to be expandable. So just last week, for example, I was reading an article, and it was talking about 5D printers. Now, when you tour the building, you'll see 3D printers. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. What happened to 4D printers? They're already talking about 5D printers. So we can expand this building for things that none of us can even dream of right now that in 10 years will be relevant. One of the things we're actually talking about right now 
is because the airline industry needs pilots, mechanics. I bet that'll be the next program in two or three years that we'll have here. But now the first story, it's about Clarence Reed. And it starts because of that road right behind the building. You know it as George Bush or the Bush. But Clarence Reed and I knew it in the late 80s as Highway 190. Because in Rowlett at that time where we both lived, there were what called the 190 wars, where the routing would be of Highway 190. And so somehow my wife and I got invited to one of the groups. And uh, because my politics were mainly in Washington, I sat on a couch in the other room and was reading a book uh, about the Civil War. And this gentleman comes over and intro introduces himself as Clarence Reed. And he sits down, he says, what are you reading? I said, oh, it's called Battle Cry of Freedom. It just came out about the Civil War. And he sat down, and for the next two hours, we talked about the Civil War. He was an expert on the Civil War, especially all the stuff that happened west of the Mississippi. Amazing, amazing stories he told me. A few weeks later, it was the next meeting, and I was again sitting on the couch doing the Sunday Times crossword puzzle. He came over and said, oh, I love to do crossword puzzles. I've never done the Sunday Times. Could we do it together? In less than an hour, we had completed the Sunday Times crossword puzzle. And there was a word that I've never told Jed or, or his family that I think certainly applied to Clarence Reed. It's called polymath. It's a person who knows a lot about a lot of different subjects. So at the next meeting, he came over to me and says, I have a present for you. See, what had happened was, when we were doing the crossword puzzle, there was a question, a uh, bottom feeder began with F, ended in R, eight letters, and I said, flounder. So he said, well, are you a fisherman? I said, well, I, I've done some fishing in the Atlantic Ocean. He said, that's not fishing. So at that meeting, he gave me this book, The Bass Fisherman's Bible, because <laughs> apparently he was an expert on bass fishing. So about a year later, uh, I called him up. I said, "Just guess where I just came from? He says, I don't know. I said, I just went to fish Lake Fork, the best bass lake in the United States. And I brought your book along. And I read it. And there was silence, just total silence. I said, Clarence, you still there? And he started laughing. He said, do you know the expression fish or cut bait? And I said, yeah. He said, it's not fish or cut bait or bring a book to read while you're fishing. He, he said, where'd that come from? And I, I said, well, he said, well, how did you do? I said, well, I caught everything. I caught every single log and tree. We lost all our hooks. And remember, he was a teacher, as you heard from his son. And he said, no, 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 you failed the course. Next time, read the book first. So a year later, I called him up. I said, guess where I was? And he said, Lake Fork. He said, did you take the book? No. Did you read the book ahead of time? Yes. How'd you do? I said, I caught a 12 pound bass. He said, I am going to give you an A minus, not an A. If you'd done that the first time, you got an A. <laughs> this time you get an A minus. Now the story um, about, the, about Dr. Gilbert is a little different. It's not about a highway, but it's about this email. So I was running for office in 2007, and in comes this email. How do you feel about vocational education in Garland? Is there a real need for it? Should we be preparing the students for college instead? Please let me know. So normally my response would have been, uh, yes, every student should go to college. But there had just been a series of articles in the Wall Street Journal about the need for CTE programs, not only for the kids who never went to college, but because of the tremendous percentage of kids who go to college and never get a degree. And so I wrote back to the person who, I didn't know who it was, and gave the response. And as I pressed the button, I said, well, there's a vote I just lost, maybe several. But a few days later, the person responded and said, I teach CTE in Garland. I've sent you a response to everybody I know, and we're all voting for you. So a miracle passes, and I win the election. The next day, I called up Dr. Colwell, and I said, I need to talk to whoever runs CTE in the district. He says, I'll set up a meeting tomorrow with Dr. Gilbreth. And we've known each other now for 11 years. But the real story is kind of one he hinted at when he talked about all the visits he made to CTE buildings around the country. 
on one of those visits, he invited me along to go to Grand Prairie, their new Dubisky CTE Center. And by the way, which he didn't refer to, the director of CTE said to me as we were touring the building, by the way, do you know you have the best CTE director, not just in the Metroplex, not just in the state, but in the United States. So congratulations. And he has won awards for that exact reason. So, so while we were touring the CTE, we got to the medical wing and the director of medical wing said, we just got this inc incredible new mannequin. And they referred it to as the $30,000 dummy. And on the way back to GISD, I said to, to Dr. Gilbeth, are we going to have one of those in the new wing at North Garland High School that we just built? And he says, I'm sure we will. So he called me a few weeks later and said, we don't have one there, but it's on the way. Then a couple of months later, he called me back and he said, I have two surprises for you the next time you go to North Garland High School. So there was a tour scheduled a few weeks later, and I'm touring the building with one of the students, and we get to the medical wing, and she says, we have this brand new $30,000 dummy. And I go, yes. <laughs> then she says, now normally when we get these dummies, the students are allowed to name the dummies. <laughs> Except in this case, we got word from the administration that we had to give it a certain name. The name was Larry. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, my wife always says I have no brains. At least I now have a net worth of $30,000. So I just have one question before I do the dedication for Dr. Gilbert, because I know there are at least three new dummies on the way to this building, and the question is, what will names will they be given? So on behalf of the Board of Trustees and Dr. Crone, and now... Dr. Lopez, we officially dedicate the Gilbert Reed Career and Tech Center on behalf of our faculty, our students, and most importantly, on behalf of the citizens of our three cities who all understand the importance of great edu education. And I'd like the trustees to join me as we unveil these plaques. Turn it over to Dr. Crump. Oh, um, I walk away from Russ. Good morning. Thank you for sharing in our true extreme joy. I am so excited for you to see the building. Um, I want to thank the Board of Trustees, President Glick. Thank you, Dr. Crone. Thank you so much. Welcome, Dr. Lopez. How exciting for that to also be on this day. What a beautiful beginning of this exciting project. Uh, we are honored that you are here, that you chose to spend your time here. I truly am so excited for you to look through our halls, talk to the kids that are in the uh, rooms. They are there to welcome you and tell you of all of the fantastic things that they are learning here. It's a true state of the art facility. And what is so neat is that they asked to be here on their Saturday. They truly want to share with you what they are learning. And it's not just that everybody needs to learn, but it's how you learn. And it is critical that you come and talk to them and see. Uh, I truly want to thank all of the administration. Dr. Griffin, you have been amazing area director. Thank you so much for your support with this. Um, school board uh, administrators, truly, it's, it's changing lives. This concludes this part of the dedication. I truly 
please take your time to stroll the, the hallways, taste the, some of the tasty treats that our culinary kids have provided for you, ask questions. Yes, we have animals in the back of the building. So you never know what's going to happen every day. I text my boss, Dr. Griffin, and go, guess what we're doing today? Please, they, the kids want to share with you their joy. Thank you.